Before we get started, I'm going to show you a little something. Let me see if. All right. Does that work? Ah. So this is actually, I'm going to spin up a cluster. I'm going to show you how we do firewalls. Uh, later on in the talk, I'll take the firewalls product and I'll explain how uh, in a Kubernetes cluster, uh, best practices that you should be applying uh, as far as it relates to firewall uh, policies. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add a cluster. We'll do it on the O. And, and we'll take home out. One of the things I'm going to do also is I'm going to add Prometheus, uh, something we rolled out last week for uh, Core OS Fest is a bunch of pre-installed uh, dashboards, so you get a bunch of visibility into your cluster right off the bat, and that's it. I'm gonna hit that, and that's gonna get building. It'll take about 10 minutes, and in that time, uh, Hiani will take us a little bit into the firewalls product, so I'm gonna hand it off to him. So, so yeah, um, as you know, we released our product firewalls on Tuesday, um, how many of y'all have our active DigitalOcean users? This is a show of hands. Uh, nice. I'd like to see how many of y'all have used our Firewalls product. All right. Way less hands. Got to change that. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to show how to really get started with the Firewalls. If you go to the Networking tab and you click on Firewalls, here we have um, no Firewalls created. and. A lot of people have been asking, why should we use DigitalOcean firewalls over something like IP tables? Well, for one, IP tables are working at the droplet level. So it uses the resources up on your server to filter out the packets and just handle all of the specific security policies. But with our firewalls, we're actually handling this at the hypervisor level. So we're filtering out the packets and making sure that none of them can, depending on the policy that you have on the firewall, we say, oh, OK, you have TCP open on port 22. OK, and that's SSH connection. Let that through. And that's handled at the networking level. So that way, we're not using up any of the resources on your server. So I actually have a couple of droplets created here. Um, one at this IP address. Let's see here. Oh, crap. Here we go. Let's see, we're going to create two things. I'm going to create. Uh, demo firewall allow all TCP on all IPv6 and all IPv4. And I'm going to apply it to droplets, demo droplet one and demo droplet two. And what this is saying in which with each rule is it's basically designating what port and protocols we want to open up. So it can be UDP, TCP, an ICMP, and then you can also do singular ports or port ranges. Um, so for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to do TCP for now, create firewall, and I'm actually going to find the ID of this droplet. And so now if you see, I'm going to do an SSH. need this. I'm in my droplet, but now what you're going to notice is if I exit out of this and then I do a ping on that, it's timing out. Now, as we keep this connection open, I'm going to go back to my firewall here and I'm going to add in a new rule that allows ICMP from all IPv4, or actually I have a better idea. Let's do a curl, I can has ip.com, pb copy. Uh, yep, I'm gonna see if I can do this live. Let's add my local IP address and see what happens here. And save, see if we can get fancy with it. And now you're seeing that before I was rejecting it, and now it's persisting that connection and letting the packet through. Um, I think there's a lot of powerful ways of using these droplets. You can't, um, my bad, firewalls. You don't only have to apply them to droplets. If you go 
into this droplet. You can add actually tags, and you can apply them to various tag um, droplets. So let's say you're running, um, let's say you're running um, just a various droplets, and you have some of them tagged with like production, or some of them with database. It's nice to like organize it. So if you're having database specific droplets, you'll have a permissive policy for running it on what is it for MySQL 3306, opening up that port via TCP, um, or even just for like production web based and services, opening it up on port 80 and 443 for HTTP and HTTPS, respectively. Um, and I think another thing that it plays nicely with is in the rules, if you, let's say you have, let's see, let's just do HTTP. Um, you don't only have to deal with IP addresses. I can actually type in demo droplet one, demo droplet two. And so if you have droplet to droplet communication between your various services hosted on your droplets, you can add permissive policies for that. And also, I'm going to go ahead and just add demo load, what did I name this, LB? Yeah, load balancer here, I'm going to save this delete all TCP on port 80. Um, so I added a load balancer and a peer role here. I actually have this load balancer created um, over here. And essentially, we just released our load balancer product back in February, I believe. Um, and the benefit of doing this is that what we get is, let's say I want to access these droplets. Oh, wait a minute. Did I not close it down? Oh, I remember why. I'm going to remove, let's see, delete tool, all TCP. Yeah. So, the benefit of doing so is if you want to lock down your droplets um, so you don't get, so you can only have a load balancer speaking to the droplet. That way, users won't be able to access your droplets IP addresses directly, but the load balancer will still be able to interface with each of your droplets and balance the traffic between the two nodes or servers. Um, and yeah, you can also use tags and rules. Uh, da, 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 da. So if I have like a demo, a tag called demo, I can apply that. All services, um, all droplets that have that tag will be able to communicate with um, that with the droplet supplied with those rules. So it also is good for like inner process communicate or inner droplet communication as well. And another benefit of this um, API that we have is we have full support for our API. And let's see, firewall list, yeah. So you can also you can use DOCTL, which is our command line tool for creating these droplets. We also have a Go package called um, Godo or GoDo. Oh, yeah, what's up? Sorry about that. Yep. Uh, are you able to filter specific types of ICMP, or is it just all or nothing? I think it's all or nothing for now. Yeah. Yep. Which encryption standard are you using? You're using A6, AES256 for your encryption, or, or you have another encryption standard to do your firewall, from, but you have to encrypt the information? I'd have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. But going on, um, what DOCT on GoTo do is that they're like wrappers or libraries around our public API, and yeah, so it's nice for using the public API. You can like, we have a PR open right now in Terraform with HashiCorp. So if you're provisioning droplets using Terraform, you can just specify your rules, um, your firewall policies in that and have the droplet automatically create with those firewall policies as well. And I think actually Stackpoint uses the public API for doing the provisioning of a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm gonna give it over to Ariel to actually talk more about how they're doing that. Hello, there we go. Um, so I'll talk to you a little bit through best practices for 
firewall policies in a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, as Hiany mentioned, we, uh, we leverage the API in order to accomplish all this. Um, and so um, I'll start with the basic, I'll use the droplet metaphor here since, uh, but it's nodes, right? And so uh, a three node cluster, uh, master two workers, uh, we'll set up the firewall and then we open up uh, ports for SSH, HTTP, HTTPS, kubectl or kube control, right? Like uh, that's debate. Uh, uh, 6443, that's not a standard, that's best practices, right? Like that's the pattern that we're seeing out there. Uh, and then uh, standard node ports, 30,000 through 30, uh, 32,767. Uh, and if you're using something like Sock Shop, that, I think it's set to like 30,000 by default uh, out of the box. Um, additionally, uh, then within the cluster, we go ahead and we uh, open up port uh, 10250, uh, and that's used for uh, kubelet uh, communication, masters and workers, and we do that to limit uh, the power and the control that we send to the pods, right? So it's a, a security feature. And then for um, the network overlay, uh, like Flannel, uh, VXLAN, uh, we open up uh, UDP port, everything uh, uh, 8472, and that's due to the amount of the volume of traffic that uh, occurs over this. Why do we secure it in this way? Because it's really easy to understand for beginners. So you can always, it's a great starting point, and then you can always come in and kind of set your own policies. Um, let me quickly switch over to the cluster that I hope should be built. Yeah, all right. Uh, here we go. Uh, how long did it take? 724, yeah, so about 10 minutes. Um, I'll show you, so uh, there it is, it's all set up. Let me, there's the firewall. Let me actually show you the nodes. So there's my node, and here's the policies all set up. Uh, why do we do it this way? Um, one of the philosophies we have at the company is convention over configuration. So the idea is we are gonna apply best practices to whatever it is that you're doing, and rather than forcing you to configure it yourself. And so here it is, uh, again, via the API and leveraging uh, uh, labels, uh, tags, tags uh, all the rules uh, set up. The, and that is, let me see what else was I gonna show. Oh, let me show you the Grafana. So here is my cluster. Ah, that was not set up. It takes a little while sometimes for that. I also have a multi-master. So one of the things we actually, that's in staging, you're looking at our staging environment, but that we look to uh, also de deploy to production here in the next week, and again, using the API, uh, we added uh, load balancers. Uh, and so what we have here is a multi-master uh, environment. Uh, which is something we've uh, added recently, or the ability to add node pools or multi-masters. And it varies a little bit from provider to provider. Uh, but here, let me show you. Here's, this has been running for a little bit. This is what the dashboard looks like. Out of the box. And I have all my nodes and all my stuff set up. Go look at pods that I have. It's actually really easy to deploy Istio, like from here. I just gotta go in, kubectl create file. Uh, I think it's Istio YAML, uh, the, the file, that's it. All right, let me, let me give it one more shot on the other cluster. Load it up. There it goes, yeah, see. So. All right, cool, let me go here. So last thing, if you wanna try all this stuff out, uh, oh, it went back. Here's a code, it's gonna happen. All right, let's go back, DO Kubernetes 15. You have 15 bucks at uh, DigitalOcean, and with that in 10 minutes, you can play around with Firewalls, Kubernetes, Istio, uh, all the goodies. Thank you very much. Questions? Awesome. All right, we'll move on. Karthik.
uh, from Tagera Calico.